a man performing in his 29th Melbourne Comedy Festival. Greg Fleet! Hi. <laughs> Recently I, I uh, had a, the end of a friendship. Um, not a lot of people know this, but I'm an American citizen. That's often a good thing. More often than not, it's a terribly embarrassing thing. And very recently, it's been very embarrassing. Uh, but a friend of mine said to me the other day, uh, oh, no, Donald Trump's OK. And that I went, oh, I had a terrible feeling. I went, oh, friendship just ended. <laughs> but uh, he said, no, Donald Trump's OK. If he gets into power, he's just the best of a, of a very bad lot. And I felt compelled to tell him that shitting yourself while wearing brown pants is still shitting yourself. <laughs> when I was a child, when I was four, we lived in Detroit. And one day Santa Claus came to our house. When I say one day, I probably mean Christmas Day. Uh, <laughs> it was mid-June and some fat fucker in a red suit turned up going, where are the children? You'd get all snow tan on the motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh, one day Santa Claus came and he brought my sister and I, my sister was six, I was four, he brought us a little St. Bernard puppy. She, her name was Frida. She was like this big and she was the smoochiest dog you've ever seen. Oh, smooch that puppy dog. She had massive feet when she was a baby. Awesome. What more could you want? But when she was about 10 months old, something happened. Now, I don't know exactly what happened to this day. I, I think she had an aneurysm or something. She didn't die, but she went from being like the smoochiest, friendliest, huggable puppy dog in the world to being a death-dealing monster. <laughs> but she just went, I'm gonna fucking kill everything, right? And uh, she quit uni, she just focused on that, right? <laughs> it was terrifying, and we could no longer see her. We went, like, she was kept in the backyard. My parents would occasionally open the door and throw meat out there and shut the door. A couple of homeless people went missing. Uh, it was Detroit, no one really cared, but... It was, it was terrifying. And then my parents got one of those dog guys. You know those guys, you see them on like police docos? They, they got an arm protector thing on. And there's always like an Alsatian attached to it. Like, Arr, and they're like, yeah, I'm a dog guy. Arr. They got one of those guys, right? And the guy was, he came around, uh, he had the arm protector thing, but he was very flamboyant. He had like one of those late 60s scarves with the gold ring that you pull up. And it's kind of like, dare I say he was a riverboat dandy, right? <laughs> He's, he's just swanning around the house talking about how he's going to deal with Frida. And I'm like thinking, oh, fuck, dude, you have dangerously underprepared yourself for the shit that is about to get real. I shoved a stool up to our kitchen sink and climbed up onto it so I could look into the backyard for what I knew. It was like I was watching a fucking UFC match, right? <laughs> I knew shit was going to get weird. I was four, right? And he's all confident, he puts his, uh, his little arm protector on, and he swans out into the backyard. He's like Lord Byron. <laughs> he's giving it a bit of sing-song voice. He starts going, Frida, oh, Frida. And what he didn't get was that Frida had been so long in the trenches of madness by this stage, he may as well have just been yelling out, have a fucking go, cunt. <laughs> right? It was insane, and she fucking destroyed this guy. She fucking went El Masivo style on him. She bit him everywhere except the arm protector. <laughs> watching this as a four, like, is this terrifying? Is it amazing? I don't know, but I couldn't stop watching. He's like, he's, he's crab walking back into the house. I was like, uh, uh. He gets back in the house, he's like, well, your dog obviously has some kind of psychological, and all I'm hearing is, I'm going to get another job, right? <laughs> now, my father, had been in the US military. He was in a thing called the Green Beret. I don't know if you know what the Green Beret is, but it's, uh, it's pretty much a thing in the US military where a whole lot of guys get together and wear hats. <laughs> and my mother called my sister and I into the living room and she said to us, hey, we got Frida, through a friend of your dad's, we got Frida a job in the army. Frida has joined the army. She's already gone. She's joined the army. As a four-year-old kid, I'm like, fucking sweet. She's aggressive, she's joined the army, everyone's happy. Now, flash forward 46 years. <laughs> I was 50. I was visiting my mum, talking to my mum, hanging out with my mum, it's time to go, I'll see you next week, whatever. Right? I go to leave, I get to the door and I'm like, oh, fuck, something I've been meaning to ask you for like 46 years <laughs> is what the fuck did Frida ever do in the army? <laughs> And my mother is looking at me like I am a lunatic, right? <laughs> She's like, you don't really think that Frida 
join the army. <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, oh, <laughs> don't you fucking tell me that you said, yeah, we had her whacked. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Why do you always have to talk like you're in the mafia? <laughs> she goes, yeah, we had her put down. I'm like, why didn't you fucking tell me that? She said, we thought you would have worked it out. We dangerously overestimated your intelligence. <laughs> really? She went, your sister was six. She was onto it like that. You're 50. <laughs> You've been absolutely lovely. Thanks so much. I'm Greg Fleet. Take care. Cheers. Happy birthday, Melbourne Comedy Festival.